a Ty Gurley and the impact he's had mm -hmm. this year. Baller. Coming out the backfield looking like a little Le'Veon, and he's running the ball real well. I like, I like what Sean McVay is doing over there. Back in the yeah. spring, Doug Marone was asked, what's the ideal number of rushes, I'm sorry, for passes for Blake Bortles during the game? He said zero. There was a Ooh. drive last week where they actually ran the ball all the way down the field. They're loving life with Leonard Fournette. Walk through. Let's go. Yeah. Walk. All right, all right, all right. Well, hey, look, this is a team that does not have a problem at quarterback. The Packers, they're taking on the Vikings. Aaron Rodgers has to deal with a defense that gives up the fewest big plays in the league. So, Mike Robb. Can the Packers finally protect Aaron Rodgers? Oh, uh, you know what, Colleen? I don't know. Uh, That's a big question. Yeah. Uh, on tape, they haven't been protecting him. Look, Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. But that guy right there, Everson Griffin, he's going to be all over Aaron Rodgers today if they don't get the blocking unit uh, solidified. I'll, I'll talk to you guys about it a little bit later. So it's I've... a been-known break defense with Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Everson Griffin, Daniel yeah, Hunter, yeah. they're balling right now. I like them safeties. Let's talk a little bit more about this matchup because we have Tom Pelissero live in Minneapolis where the Vikings are without a handful of starters, including their quarterback, Tom. Yeah, Colleen, this is not how the Vikings expected their offense to look for their first game against the Packers. No Sam Bradford, no Dalvin Cook, of course, and no Stephon Diggs, who is out with a groin injury. Really, this is where the Vikings defense needs to earn its money. Remember, they paid a bunch of their own guys on second contracts over the past year, and the Vikings have been really pleased that all those guys have taken their game to the next level. Nobody has done that more than defensive end Everson Griffin, who already had six sacks through five games, and to quote one Vikings team source, is playing out of his mind right now. I talked to Griffin this week and asked him, when the Vikings have had success in the past, keeping Rodgers from wrecking the game, what have they done well? He said, our coaches always give us a good plan for how we're going to get to him, and we need to stick to that plan, rush him together as a group. In other words, don't let Rodgers get outside the pocket. Don't let him change the angles. Don't let him start freestyling, as one Vikings veteran put it. Of course, Colleen, this is Aaron Rodgers, so easier said than done. That's right, Tom. And, and I know Daniil Hunter, we heard John Gruden on the broadcast say that that's one person he would love to look like. Uh, he's got he's got a great body, according to John Gruden. It was a really weird situation in the Monday Night Football game. Tom, thank you so much. Of course, the Vikings are going to be riding the hot hand to try and keep this guy off the field. Aaron Rodgers, his last eight games in Minnesota. Look at that footwork. The Packers are 5-3, and three, but that touchdown to interception ratio. It's Smogan, 20 touchdowns and two interceptions. Tomorrow is just his second time playing in U.S. Bank Stadium. So we'll see how that turns out tomorrow. Now, we have, uh, of course, more no news here at the top of the show. Ezekiel Elliott's six-game suspension is back on. The result of the latest court ruling is uh, very complicated right now. So that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to miss any games, but his legal team is challenging the decision, which could still keep Zeke off the field. Mike Garofolo, I'm going to need you to break oh, this down okay. uh, and, and explain face. all of this. But first, Jerry Jones on the radio yesterday <laughs> <laughs> said this. <laughs> There is no question that uh, uh, the uh, commissioner has the authority to make these suspensions. Uh, the question was ultimately going to be, uh, does he have to follow in practice a fair way? And so uh, Zeke and uh, his team and, and the Cowboys do not think that it was done in a fair way. Uh, and uh, we are trying to uh, get that looked at, and uh, we got a setback yesterday. A setback yesterday, setback. so as Annoying. of today, <laughs> these are the six games that Zeke would, quote-unquote, miss. Don't pay attention to what Garofalo is saying. Look, they, they, the Eagles, they would get by without seeing Zeke if this, was, uh, if this went into effect. They'd miss the Redskins, so a couple division games there. Uh, Garofolo, what, what does this mean? Can you break it down for us? This is so, really going to happen. What it means is Niners, Redskins, Chiefs, whoever was on that list, get prepared to see Ezekiel Elliott because I'm still hearing and people on Zeke's side still believe that this thing is going to be delayed and pushed back into the 2018 season at the very least. They still hope that he's going to win on this. Now, I'm going to spare you all the legalese because I've been sorting through it and all that stuff. He's just, he has a lot of options right now to still delay this thing and to still push this thing back. What happened was the NFLPA, before the NFL appeal was even completed, filed in Texas and said, well, we know what the decision is going to be. The judge down there said, that's no problem. Doesn't matter when you filed because I was ruling on it after it was completed eventually. Doesn't matter when it was actually filed. 
The New York court said, no, you can't do that. You can't file early. So now Zeke and his legal team, they've talked about another hearing in New York, again, sparing you all the legalese. But everybody on his side, the player's side, the NFLPA side, still believes that they are going to get the stay put back into place in some form or fashion and push this thing off into the future. So he's playing. That's what I Basically, believe, he's playing. as I sit right here. That's a prediction, okay. but it's an educated prediction because of the people I'm, I'm talking to and what they believe and what they plan to do here to keep stringing this thing along to eventually get their hearing on the merits of the case. Because the, the court the other day didn't say, oh, he has to serve this right yeah, now because right. of the evidence. Mm -hmm. They said he has to get this stay taken away because you filed this thing too early. You can't appeal something that wasn't already appealed. They didn't rule on the actual merits of the case. Well, and look, this is definitely taking a toll, I'm sure, on him, really on the team. I mean, what do you what do you think when you watch it? Because he's just not himself. No, he's not himself. First of all, the guys in front of him aren't themselves right. either. But that's a whole other conversation. Uh, but at some point, I know Zeke wants this thing to be over. Like, over. I know that we're talking about maybe the suspension will be next year or whatever, but no player wants to even hear the word suspension in regards to uh, football to them. So uh, it may be better for this team um, that I'm not, I know that you're saying he may not serve the suspension, but it may be better for this team that he goes ahead and serve the suspension now. Not at all. And put it behind him? I'm just saying, and put it behind him. I'm just saying, bro, and get, not, it, not, get it out the way. Not if I feel innocent. For a team innocent. that's two and three right now, that's if, tough. If, 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 I'm, if I'm innocent, nah, I'm not going to put this behind. I'm not going to serve a suspension. Now, if I'm guilty, uh, but you I'm probably think cool the, with the, the league is different. Right. It's, it's not about whether you, you did it or not. It's about what we made the league, what, what he made the league look like, right? It, it doesn't right. matter, but when you're innocent, you're innocent. And this man feels like he's innocent. And Jerry Jones is pretty much saying the same thing. Like, he feels like it's unfair. We going, they're going after Ezekiel Elliott. But if I'm innocent, I'm fighting this to the end. And that's part of the NFLPA and Zeke. That's part of their argument for irreparable harm. That's why mm -hmm. you need to give us this stay, which if you don't know what a stay means, means that basically the suspension is put off while this case goes through. and then we'll fight. Because if he serves the six games and then it's winds up winning later, he can't get those six games back. It doesn't help his team. Now, yeah. now, the NFL will say, well, he can always get the money back, but they'll that say, hey, I, the yardage I could have gotten. The and in a lot of people's are, minds, if no I question. serve the suspension, people will say, oh, he was guilty. He served it. I remember mm -hmm. he served it because that's what they base it yep. on. But the NFL has countered that by saying, we want the suspension served promptly. That's our irreparable harm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, no question this would harm the Cowboys going forward. The Cowboys and right the, now. And the bye. Very fortunate that this game exactly. during the bye. Gave him a little more time. That's to play things out yeah, it, I got it, it all up here, brother. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Cowboys, they're looking up at the Eagles and Carson Wentz. So forget about what we thought before the season. Is Philly really the best team in the NFC? And the Giants, well, they're just a mess right now, going from bad to worse. Garofolo has details we haven't heard yet.